Hello everyone, I am back again. My name is Ulua Tui and welcome to this channel where we talk about life, living, faith, our journey as Christians, worship, and now sessions where we just read the Bible. <music> Now, this started with the very first video I had done on that when we read the book of Psalm 27 and I'd asked if you wanted it daily. I've changed my mind, even if you said yes, and I know that a couple of people said yes <laughs> in the comment section. Thank you for enjoying the reading, but uh, for YouTube, we'll just read it three times a week instead of having it daily. But if you're a child of God, if you're a Christian, I want to believe that you have your daily practice for reading the Bible, whether it's soft copy or hard copy. Here on this channel, we'll read it three days a week, every Tuesday, every Thursday, and every Saturday, you would see a new video, but we're also gonna break it so that it's something structured. So every Tuesday, we'll read a portion in the New Testament. Every Thursday, we'll read a portion from either the book of Psalms or Proverbs. And then every Saturday, we'll read a portion from every other book in the Old Testament. So Tuesdays, New Testament, Thursdays, Thursdays, Psalms or Proverbs, and then Saturdays, every other book in the Old Testament. So today being Saturday, we're going to be reading from the book of Isaiah. And we're reading from Isaiah, the Passion Translation, the book of Isaiah. Now, the Passion Translation is an interesting translation of the Bible that I really love. If you read sort of like this book of Psalms in the Passion Translation, it's so intimate. It's like so romantic. Some of those verses just come up in such a different way, filled with so much love and so much passion. And initially, when they had, you know, released um, their translation of the Bible, they had done that in the entire new testament i was going to say new translation the entire new testament to the book of psalms and proverbs but excitedly they came out with the book of isaiah and they've even also come out now with the book of genesis so um they're still in the process of writing some of the books but i think it was just amazing to say as we are writing we would be releasing and so today i have a copy of a hard copy of the book of isaiah here and we'll be reading from the Passion Translation in Isaiah 62. So let's get right into the reading of the word. Isaiah chapter 62, and we are reading from the Passion Translation. It is titled here, God Delights in Zion. For Zion's sake, how can I keep silent? For Jerusalem's sake, how can I remain quiet? I will keep interceding until her righteousness breaks forth like the blazing light of dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. Nations will see your victory vindication, and every king will witness your blinding radiance. You will be called by a brand new name, given to you from the mouth of Yahweh himself. Verse 3, you will be a beautiful crown held high in the hand of Yahweh, a royal crown of splendor held in the open palm of your God. You will never again be called the abandoned one, nor will your land be called deserted, but you will be called my delight is in you, and your land my beloved wife, for Yahweh finds his delight in you, and he married your land. Verse 5, as a young man marries the young woman he loves, so your builder sons will marry you. As the bridegroom finds joy in his union with his bride, so will your God take joy in his union with you. Amen. Intercession. Jerusalem, I have stationed intercessors on your walls who will never be silent day or night. You reminders of Yahweh, take no rest and tirelessly give God no rest until he firmly establishes Jerusalem and makes her the praise of all the earth. Verse eight, Yahweh swears an oath by the authority of his right hand and by his mighty arm. I will never again give your new grain as food for your enemies, nor will foreigners drink your new wine that you worked hard to produce. Instead, you who harvest it will eat it and offer your praise to Yahweh, and you will gather the grapes will drink the new wine in my holy courts. Pass through, pass through the gates, 
and go from old to new. Prepare a new path for the people. Build, build up a highway for them to come to me. Remove every hindrance and unfurl a banner for the nations. See, Yahweh has proclaimed to the ends of the earth. Tell my daughter Zion, look, here comes your deliverer. See, he's bringing his reward and his recompense goes before him. Verse 12 and final verse. They will be called these holy people, the redeemed of Yahweh, and you will be known as those whom God loves, a city not abandoned. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. So as we finish reading that, I just feel like we should read it as well in the New King James Version. So here is the New King James Version of the book of Isaiah, chapter 62. Assurance of Zion's salvation. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a lamp that burns. The Gentiles shall see your righteousness, amen, and all kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord will name. You shall also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no longer be termed forsaken, nor shall your land any more be termed desolate, but you shall be called Hephzibah and your land Beulah. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a virgin, so shall your sons marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. Verse 6. I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace day or night. You who make mention of the Lord, do not keep silent and give him no rest till he establishes and till he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength, surely I will no longer give your grain as food for your enemies and the sons of the foreigner shall not drink your new wine for which you have labored. But those who have gathered it shall eat it and praise the Lord. Those who have brought it together shall drink it in my holy courts. From verse 10, go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people, build up, build up the highway. Take out the stones, lift up a banner for the peoples. Indeed, the Lord has proclaimed to the end of the world, say to the daughter of Zion, surely your salvation is coming. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. And final verse, verse 12, and they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and you shall be called sought out, a city not forsaken. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. So we just read from the book of Isaiah 62. At the beginning, I had said the Passion Translation. And then when we finished that, I just felt we should read from the New King James Version. So these things are not, you know, fully planned. I know the books we're going to read, but I might decide we read one translation and then it becomes two or three. And the beautiful thing about the different translations of the Bible for me is that they just, you know, the different interpretations adds light to light. And sometimes you might read something in one translation and it doesn't really quite give you the understanding you need in that season. And then when you read it in another translation, it's just boom, so much light and revelation. And so maybe there's something that some people needed to hear in the New King James that wasn't, you know, quite worded like that in the Passion Translation. And you might watch this and God is even leading you to go and read it in the Amplified, the CV, the NLT. That's just the beauty of the Bible. Two things that just stood out for me that always stand out for me. The book of Isaiah and the prophet Isaiah is just such a deep prophetic book. But two things that particularly stand out for me in this particular chapter. Number one is the power of intercession and the fact that we should never get tired of just staying in that place of prayer. You know, verse one starts by saying, for Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, he says, I will not rest until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as lamp as a lamb that burns. He said again in verse 6, he said, I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace day or night. You know, 
the, I, I, I like how the Passion Translation calls them, you reminders of Yahweh. You put that always, God needs to, you need to continue. Let him be here in your voice. He calls you a reminder of Yahweh. He says, take no rest and tirelessly give God no rest until he firmly establishes Jerusalem and makes her the praise of all the earth. You know, many times there's a tendency to get tired, to get weary, to burn out. You've been praying for something, about something for years. And for me, what I even love about this is not necessarily a personal prayer. It's an intercession. It could be for somebody else. It could be for a nation. It could be for a people. It could be for your family. It could be for your friend. And you're just like, God, I've been praying. I've been praying. It's like you're not listening to me. And God is saying, continue. Don't get tired. Stay there. Continue. And the second thing I love about the chapter is that it's such there's such a reassurance, especially if you're someone that has gone through rejection. And I believe saying this right now, that this is a powerful word for someone. If you're someone that has gone through rejection or stuff as, you know, people have shown you stuff, stuff has happened to you that has affected your self-esteem, has affected, you know, how your identity of yourself. And he said in verse three, you shall also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of God. You shall no longer be termed forsaken. You shall no longer think about yourself as rejected. That's my personal addition. He says, you shall no longer be termed forsaken, nor shall your land anymore be termed desolate. And immediately God changed the name. You shall be called Hephzibah and Beulah for the Lord delights in you and your land shall be married. This is the power of the word of God. And we engage. Faith is the currency of the child of God. The same way that you want to go to the market and you want to buy pepe. You have to have money to exchange. Faith is our currency. This is what we take. This is what we use to make that exchange. This is your word. You've given it to me for this situation. I hold on to it and I will use it to receive my promise. You know, and that, um, the, the, the verse on that reassurance, that was what he ended it with. I love verse 12. And he said again, they will be called his holy people, the redeemed of Yahweh. You'll be known as those whom God loves, a city not abandoned. The new King James said, I'm looking at the message, so I was confused. The New King James, because my Bible is the New King James and the Message Bible. The New King James said, and they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and you shall be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. I'll just read the message here, just that verse. It says, Zion will be called new names, holy people, God redeemed, sought out, not forsaken. And if you've gone through situations where you just feel like, Everybody has rejected you, family, friends, the whole world just seems to be against you. And God is using this to reassure you today. I pray that you receive that reassurance in your spirit and in your heart and just take it up and tell yourself. Sometimes you have to tell yourself several times a day, God has given me a new name. I am redeemed. I am sought out. I am not forsaken. I am not rejected. I am a crown in the hands of God. I am his royal diadem. Declare those things to yourself and let it change your identity within and you see the manifestation without. Thank you for joining me for this reading, Isaiah 62 from the Passion Translation. Like I said, Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays and on Tuesday we are reading a book from the New Testament and we'll be reading John chapter 5. And at least for now, I know that we'll be reading John chapter 5 from the Amplified Bible. Yes, the Amplified Bible. But for now... Have yourself a beautiful, well, weekend because you're watching this on Saturday. If you watch it, the day came out. But for whatever day you happen to stumble on this video, have yourself a wonderful morning, afternoon, night, evening. But most importantly, make the word of God your best friend. Thank you. Bye-bye.